Okay, uh, this is Team Virtual, um, P Department, and we are continuing our podcast series for um, our Cambridge National in Sports Science uh, Unit R041, which is reducing the risk of sports injuries. We've already done podcasts on LO1, LO2, LO3, and LO... Sorry, LO3, sorry, we're about to do LO4. We originally planned to do LO3 and 4 together, but we've now changed it, so this is an LO4 podcast. And this is about knowing how to respond to common medical conditions. This will probably be the smallest of our four podcasts. There's not that much information in LO4. Certainly LO2 and 3 were massive. And um, again, I'm, I'm with Mr. Nealon, myself and Mr. Nealon doing this one. And we're going to talk you through four common medical conditions. And again, you may think there's loads more medical conditions than this. Yeah, no, there is, but you only need to know four for this exam. Uh, so four common medical conditions and you need to know what it is. What are the symptoms and how do you treat it? Again, so this could be that you're a coach or a manager or even you're just playing with someone who has one of these conditions and um, they had a problem with one of these conditions. And again, it's one, good for life to know how to sort them out. And two, obviously, for the exam, you may be able to give the symptoms and the treatment. So if I start off, there's four you need to know. The first one is one I've got myself. So it's one very easy for me to talk about. And it is asthma. And again, just note the spelling of asthma, A S T. H M A. We spelled that wrong. A S T H M A. Asthma. Um, and asthma is an inflammation of the bronchi, uh, which are tubes that help you get oxygen into the body or air into the body. So if you have asthma, um, you're more likely. To, it's not always, but you are more than likely to have asthma, a, a condition in your family. That's certainly the case in my family. So. Uh, my uncle and my dad have got asthma and I certainly have asthma. So it's just inflammation of the small tubes, meaning you struggle to get air into the lungs, therefore get oxygen round to the working muscles. Symptoms of asthma um, is a shortness of breath. That's fairly obvious. So your chest feels tight. You get a tightness across your chest and you're struggling to get oxygen in. So you're struggling. There's a shortness of breath. You're, you're finding it hard to get oxygen into the system. Some people get coughing um, and some people get wheezing. I certainly I don't get coughing, but I certainly get wheezing and you'll hear your chest and you'll feel tight across your chest. And again, it can be made worse in different times of the year when it's uh, uh, hay fever season or it's cold that's sometimes harder. But generally, it's this inflammation of the, of the bronchi, which means you sort of get oxygen in, you get coughing, wheezing, shortness of breath, breath, and you get a tightness across your chest. Treatment for this... Um, it's varied, there's lots of things you can do. First of all, you stop and you sit, the, you sit the person down. So if you see someone who's struggling with asthma, they stop and you sit them down, reassure them they're gonna be okay, keep them calm, keep them relaxed, because some people do panic when they're having, uh, not everyone gets asthma attacks, but if they're having a, a spell of asthma, some people panic and it makes their breathing go even more shallow. Um, encourage them to take slow, steady breaths, often in through the nose, out through the mouth. An inhaler. They should have this themselves and they normally know to take it. I certainly do a carry my inhaler everywhere. If someone's having a big attack though, um, and it's not something I've ever had, you might need to call emergency services. You know, a big asthma attack can be quite dangerous. Um, most people don't have asthma attacks, they just get symptoms and then they, they take an inhaler. But if it's a really bad case, you would take um, your inhaler or if it's really bad, you said you would call for an ambulance. And some people have some um, other prescribed steroids and, and things like that to help them with their breathing. So that is asthma. And obviously it's important because when you're playing oxygen, uh, you're playing sport, you know that how important it is to get oxygen and breathe effectively to be able to stay aerobic and to be able to, to play effectively. So asthma can affect sport quite a lot if unless you are um, properly medicated or properly aware of those symptoms and treatments. Okay, Mr. Nealon. We're going to talk about diabetes, and, and the first thing we'll say is there's two types of diabetes. It's quite nice too, was it here? Mr. Nealon can talk about type 1 diabetes, and I can talk about type 2. So, Mr. Nealon, type 1 diabetes, please. Yeah, so it's important in the exam that you don't get these two uh, mixed up. Um, an easy way to do it, if you think about type 1 diabetes, um, this is the, body, the pancreas's abil like, ability, and it, it doesn't produce any insulin, so the pancreas doesn't produce any insulin so type 1 the body doesn't produce any insulin and it's typically diagnosed in an early in someone's life um, and it could be genetic as well so this is one where people often have to have um blood tests and stuff like that yeah, on a daily constantly. basis okay yeah. Right, okay yeah um, some symptoms of this um, a person could feel very thirsty uh, they may um, go to the toilet quite frequently than others 
particularly at night. Um, they may start to feel tired, more regular. Um, weight loss and loss of muscle bulk, as well as blurred vision. And they may also experience some sl slow healing of cuts and grazes as well. Okay. So with our treatments, again, um, because this is the less common form of diabetes type one, people who don't produce any insulin, so actually need to have insulin injections. Um, it's less frequent than type two. Um, so some saying that, some that lifestyle improvements can help. So making sure you're fit and healthy and um, not carrying too much weight is important. But often people who have type one diabetes have to have insulin injections. So there's various ways to do it. There's patches now that automatically give them, but they'll take their blood sugars and see if their blood sugars are low. Um, if their blood sugars are too low, you'll get sweating and shaking. They may feel confused, and this is called hypoglycemia. And this is where, if you know someone who's type 1 diabetic, if they go hypoglycemic, which is when they have what they call a hypo, they have to get some sugar in themselves fast. So again, you might have seen this in PE sometimes. Uh, someone who's type 1 diabetic, uh, no insulin. So what they'll do is they'll start to feel a bit funny. They'll normally know themselves, a bit shaky, a bit weak. Um, having a hypo they'll tell you and they'll go and get i don't know a twix or they'll go and get a, a bit of chocolate or a sugary biscuit or something that will quickly boost their blood sugar levels and um, and obviously insulin helps them control and um, blood sugars over a period of time so type what type 1 diabetes is the less common type it's where insulin is not being produced in the body um, and again if someone's having a hypo it can be quite dangerous actually if you don't act fast enough so that's why they have fast acting sugars um, but they also sometimes have insulin injections. It's no normally genetic, not always, but normally normally genetic, as opposed to type 2, which I'm going to talk about now. So type 2 diabetes um, is where the, the body does produce some insulin, but it doesn't produce enough to function properly. So what you find is that type 2 diabetes is actually a lifestyle thing. Often it's someone who's got a poor diet, someone who is normally... Um, doesn't exercise regularly, often overweight, um, haven't controlled their diet properly, so their insulin levels go all over the place, basically, and they're not producing enough to function properly. And again, some of the symptoms of type 2, which is the more common type of diabetes, are very similar to type 1. Again, very thirsty, urinating more um, at night, particularly tired, loss of muscle, bulk, blurred vision, very similar um, symptoms to type 1 diabetes the difference is that the main reason the main way of doing it is that you've got to change your lifestyle so you've got to make sure that you lose weight that you exercise you can have some tablets um, sometimes they can need insulin but normally it's about making sure you're aware of your blood sugar levels um, and again they too can have hypos but it's normally to do with lifestyle. Type 2 diabetes is normally to do with having a poor diet. They are producing some insulin, but the insulin levels can be all over the place because the diet is wrong. Uh, and the level of exercise, often older people struggle with it a little bit more than younger people. So that type 1 is the more dangerous and it's the least, the more rare. And that is where the body produces no insulin. Type 2 is where the body does produce some insulin. Type 1 has the injections. Type 2 tends not to. And it's more to do with diet, health and exercise. Okay, so there's our two types of diabetes. We've got asthma we've talked about, we've talked about type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes. Our final, um, our final medical condition that you need to know, and again, of course, there are more, but you only need to know four for this exam. Um, and the final one is that of epilepsy. So as we said, our, four, our final condition is that of epilepsy. Epilepsy is a common condition, again, probably more common than you'd expect, that affects the brain and can cause seizures. So obviously you'll know a seizure if you've ever seen somebody have a seizure. It's not particularly nice actually. Um, they can pass out, they'll certainly shake. Um, and again, can, can lose consciousness as I said, and they'll start blinking. Not particularly nice, but again, can be controlled if done right. So um, often, again, it can be inherited uh, in your genes from your parents. You can get epilepsy that way. Um, or has been associated sometimes with trauma to the brain, something that's happened and people can become epileptic that way. So in terms of symptoms then, what are, what are the symptoms of epilepsy? Yeah, so there's quite a few uh, sim different symptoms. So you could get tingling sensations um, in, in your body, pins and needles, things like that. Um, sudden muscle stiffness, seizures, which we, also, we've, we just talked about, which yeah. can also be called fits. You might know them by fits, but make sure you put seizures in your exam. Um, loss of senses, it's going to be taste, smell, 
you could. Maybe. But it's interesting, you can lose smell, but also you can get unusual smells. I've heard of people who are epileptic smelling like a metallic -y smell yeah, or taste yeah. metallic. -y. Like burnt toast and yeah, things like that. Yeah. Like. Um, there's stuff with uh, you can lose consciousness, like Sir said, you could faint, pass out. Um, the inability to remember things more constant, more frequently. Yeah. Um, foaming at the mouth and headaches as well. Yeah, again, and if, if you ever were you know, playing sport with someone or just generally with someone who, who had epilepsy, they normally know these symptoms again. But of course, yeah. if they go into fit, it's not. It can be quite scary when someone goes into. Yeah, into I. Fit. Um, a friend of mine has epilepsy and he used to, when he was going into like a, a seizure and a fit, he used to squeeze himself like right. really, really hard and shake, squeeze himself like that. Um, or, or squeeze someone, and cut, you get, you grab the first person, get, get a hug, and just you'd squeeze him tight, you couldn't breathe. Yeah, and again, and, and again um, seizures can be of different levels in yeah. people who get like, really serious seizure. Not. So basically in terms of that, we've gotten through the, our, our, our symptoms. In terms of treatments, um, Again, most people um, who are epileptic would have a care plan. So when we talked about our emergency action plans in LO3, um, they would have a care plan so where people would know and would know what to do. Uh, there are certain drugs you can take, medication, anti-epileptic drugs that may stop a seizure um, or stop it getting worse. You can have special diets that help. If someone's having an actual fit, obviously you need to make sure they're safe, keep them away from any objects of harm, keep them warm and, and ask for help. Um, but you know, on, on a bigger term, there are anti-epileptic drugs that can control these things. So epilepsy would be our fourth condition. Obviously, with this. it's to do um, with the brain, and it causes seizures. But again, you need to know the symptoms and the treatments of, of what you would do in those scenarios. So again, we've just to recap, we've talked about four different medical conditions that might affect. Uh, obviously, it would affect life, but it would also. Um, common medical conditions but certainly would certainly affect you in sport and as a teacher I've had to know about loads of students over the years who've had diabetes or are asthmatic or epileptic and they have, to, they have to know in case I take them to a fixture or they're playing in a lesson and they have a fit or they have an asthma attack or they have a hypo these are all really important things to make sure people know and you include your emergency action plans so you know how to help those people should that happen often it doesn't but sometimes it has done as well so you need to know make sure you know about epilepsy asthma type 1 and type 2 diabetes and make sure you know the difference between them and again that subject specific language is vital We're just looking at an exam question on this now and um, just saying give three symptoms that a coach should be aware of if someone in their class had been diagnosed with asthma so again we've talked about those before you talk about a tightness in chest you would talk about wheezing in you talk about coughing there would be your three marks that just asks you to list them there's three marks give away sometimes it might ask you to explain the effects if it says explain you've got to go into detail so that's the end of lo4 lo4 is quite a short one it's just those four medical conditions um and said we have got podcasts back in for all learning objectives in this particular unit to help you revise uh, for the external exam okay nice one